but the man but the woman for the man right. yeah listen mm. but he was thinking of himself That's right. yeah. God was thinking that if I can satisfy you that means that the woman that you met carries everything that you need. That's right. And the only reason you don't have everything that you need is because you ain't honoring the woman that God gave you. That's right. Well, well. Wow. You hear what I'm saying? God will make you honor a woman even if she's a harlot. That's right. If you don't believe me, ask Hosea. Yes. Hosea said, God, you gave me a woman, and every time I look, she's with somebody else. He said, don't worry about it. That's just Israel that go harlotting after other nations. But he made her stay married. There's no such thing as divorce. Divorce is in your mind. Because if God wanted to create divorce, he would have divorced the church a long time ago. Oh, you ain't heard nothing I'm saying. You don't want to hear that. Because you want to do what you want to do when you want to do it. But God never created divorce. And Moses said, I'll give you a writ. But it was never the plan of God to divorce. Because God said, I'm married to the backslider. Yes, yes. So if God said, I'm married to the backslider. And that I won't divorce a backslider. So if we are so perfect in the church. And we are to follow the pattern that God set. How come divorce in the church is greater than divorce in the world? Because you are making an excuse, and an excuse is what? A, a God, God lie. lie. Oh. That's right. You're trying to guard something that's not even real. Mm -hmm. that's right. mm -hmm. that's right. And the liar that you met, mm -hmm. you created him. Ah. Well, 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 well. You created him. You married him. Yeah. And then you're going to complain about what you picked. Well. <laughs> you gonna complain about what you pick? What? Oh, I'm in love with you. I, I, oh, well, baby, come. <laughs> you gonna complain about what you pick? Listen, listen. See, it's different between right and good. See, when you're green, you're grown. When you're right, you're right. That's why an apple can't stay on the tree. It's got to be picked. That's why you got to pick the fruit from your wife. <laughs> 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 Listen, <Doc>. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm honored today. Today is the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to close. I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be real short today because we've been celebrating eight days. But I want to bring, I want to close everybody up by bringing everybody up to speed by doing a slight recap. For those of you that are on the line, you can go to the website jforhim.org, hit live broadcast, and you can stream in right now. Stream in right now. Go to the website, jforhim.org. And let me close this celebration with how awesome God is. Yeah. I've been all week, I've been saying, God, how are we going to close? Because today is the eighth day. The number eight is the number of new beginnings. Yes. The number eight is the number of rebirth. And the number eight is the number of regeneration. So we're in the season of rebirth, regeneration, and, re and new beginnings. All right, all right. Now how do we get to the Feast of Tabernacle? We got to the Feast of Tabernacle by celebrating the Passover. When we celebrate the death, the burial, the resurrection, not Easter, but resurrection right. sun season. When we celebrated the Passover by taking communion, by remembering that the blood 
is the redemptive power of God. And the body is the body of Christ. That when we eat that cracker, we're eating the word. It represents what Ezekiel did when he ate the whole roll. We are to eat everything in the word. We are to consume everything in the word. Whether it's good or bad or indifference. We move from Passover into first fruit. Jesus Christ, the first fruit from what? The dead. Right. Meaning that he was the first person to ever be risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit in the entire universe. He's the first. Yeah, yeah. So now he becomes the second man, Adam, because the first man, Adam, is still asleep. Even though the rib has been taken out of him and he's created a raw man with the womb. Woman. So now we move from Passover, first fruit, you to give your first fruit of all of your increase. You're not supposed to eat it upon yourself. We move from first fruit, we move into 50 days that he was on the earth, seen by Cephas and seen by another 500, seen by the apostles. We're celebrating those 50 days of favor. Why? Because it is the last 50 days that Christ literally in a physical soulish form with a soul with a body with a spirit with a physical condition will be on the earth that will ever feel the infirmity or take the abuse from mankind again we move out of the season of favor into the 50th day meaning Pentecost or the season Acts 1 and 2 and so forth where the Holy Spirit descends into a corporate human body of believers filling you with the Holy Spirit illuminating your mind that you'll be able to comprehend regulatory and prophetic messages right. and leading of the Holy Spirit right. because now he has descended into your physical condition. That's right. We move from that from the season of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not in the earth. The Bible says that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is in the earth. So we move into now Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Now we're moving into the Feast of Tabernacle. Sukkoth. Because now for 40 years they've been traveling in the wilderness. They didn't have a home. They were homeless. They lived in apartments. They lived in caves. But God said, I want you to build a booth, Sukkoth, to remind you of where you come from. That's right. You might drive a good car now, but there was a season you didn't. Amen. You might own a house now, but there was a season that you didn't. You might be in an apartment now, but there was a season you wish you had a room. Yeah. And so God is saying in the Feast of Tabernacle, I want you to remember where you came from, the struggle that you had, because where I'm about to take you yeah. is so much better than where you've been. Yeah, that's right. So he said, celebrate the feast of tabernacle. Turn to John chapter 7. I'm at my clothes. And verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. The feast of tents, tabernacle, they lived in tents. 
This was to be celebrated during the month of Tarshish. It was the last half of September and the first half of October. Look at Deuteronomy 29 and verse 12. And on the 15th day of the month, of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no severe work, and you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. It's been seven days. Today is the eighth day. We're to celebrate. And so when Vanessa called and said, Apostle, do you remember that I had asked you about the, the praise and worship. I said, yeah, bring him on. I had no idea at the time. This was the eighth day commanding a celebration of worship, commanding a celebration of praise because the worship sealed what God did, but He, the worship also opened a door for us to walk through through what he's about to do. Wow. Wow. Only God could appoint a worshiper. Only God could assign someone and to blow the trumpet in Zion and to remind the church of the glory of his presence, of his praise, of his holiness. Yeah, yeah, Only yeah, God could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't plan it. I didn't orchestrate it. But God put it in my heart to say yes. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what kind of worshiper he was. We're a non-denominational prophetic apostles movement. We're trying to move in a vein. But can I tell you, he stepped right into that thing yeah. and began to glorify God yeah. and begin to magnify God. Yeah. He didn't yeah. bring, he yeah. didn't yeah. cause the spirit to go down, yeah. Yeah. but he caused the spirit to go up. Yeah. He illuminated your mind, your consciousness, your soul, your will, your desire, and now you should be on fire. Yeah. 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 There should be a fire burning in you. Yeah. It was consistent with what we do. When you look at the book of Deuteronomy, yeah. chapter 16, and verse 13, you shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that, gather your corn, gather your wine. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. He said, gather your corn. Gather your wine. I got to find the book of Job for a minute. Just give me a second. Hallelujah. Because see, whenever you see corn, it represents increase. Come on, lift your hand and say, God, I, I'm receiving the increase. Right? Yes, God. God, there's a supernatural increase that's being imparted into me right now. He said, and your wine, whenever you see the word wine now, you're beginning to see that there's a sweetness coming to your life. Yes, sir. Something is about to turn for you. Something is about to take another step in God's direction that had been walking in a different direction.